Hello and welcome to the 10th video in this series. This video is dedicated entirely to classes in Python, a very, very quick primer. If you already know about this stuff, then please feel free to go on to the next video. We're going to do nothing about Forex in this video. Otherwise, stay with the video, because I'm conscious that if you're just beginning, the learning curve will already have been pretty steep, and without knowing a little bit in advance about how classes work, it's only going to get impossibly steep, I think. So what is a class then in Python? Well, a class is essentially an object. We've already seen objects, dictionaries, where we have keys and we have values, and a class is very much the same thing. We can define a class and make an instance of that class or of that object. The useful thing is, is that classes come with a lot more functionality built in, and the functionality that we're going to use inside this course I want to demonstrate here so that we understand how everything is going to work. So let's make a new class and call it dog. And that's all the syntax we need in Python to tell Python that we have a class of dog that we can instantiate. As I said before, think of it as an object. So I can make a new one, I'll say d is equal to dog. And that's made a new dog object for me. If I print it, I get main, so the current file being executed, dot dog, so it's a class of type dog, and it's an object at this address in the memory. If I want, I can make another dog, I'll call this one E, just to keep my brain in gear, and now I can print E below here, actually I'll print it here, and you can see that I've got the dog originally still at 430, and I've got a new one at 340 here, so these are both different instances of this dog class, and remember, see this dog as an object. So on its own like this, it's pretty useless, apart from fun to just type things in notebooks. So let's look at something else we can do. Just like keys and values with objects, we can make member variables of a class. The variable name, see it as a key, and then whatever storing is the object that it's storing. And we can set these up when we create an instance of our class. And the way we do this is using a built-in function that comes with every class. So every class comes with this init function with double underscore either side built in. When we create a new instance of this class, the init function will automatically, on initialization, so it's init, be called. Therefore, when we create our new dog each time for D and E, we should see hello being printed. What might be confusing to you is this self as the first parameter. This tells Python that this method is attached to the individual instance of the dog. And why is this important? Well, with classes, we can also have class level methods which aren't attached to any instance. And we'll see an example of this in a minute. So if I just run that cell and then run these cells here, you can see that I get hello printed twice. That means this init was called each time we made a new instance of dog. So I'll remove the e dog and just execute that again. And now what we're going to do is add a couple of member variables to our class, much like keys and values. So I'll call one of them name and one of them age. And now to store these in our class, we use self, so the instance itself, and I'll say one of them is called name, set that equal to name, and one of them is called age, and set that equal to age. Now you don't have to call name name, you could have called it something else, because it's being set equal to the parameter that's passed in. I prefer to always keep these names the same, otherwise my tiny brain gets confused. So just execute this cell again and make darn sure it's been executed. And now when I try and define a dog, I'll get an error, because it's saying that we haven't sent the initialization function the two positional arguments name and age, and it's correct. So let's give it a name, Fido, and then age 99, it's an old dog. We still print hello on initialization, and now we have a dog with these variables attached to it. So if I say dog age, I get 99, and if I say dog dot name, I get Fido. If I just put the dog it's alone to the output, you can see that I still get just the memory address. And this is a little bit inconvenient, particularly when we want to print out lists or something of our objects. So later on, we'll have lists of instruments, for example. When we print out our instrument list, we don't just want to see instrument and then the address that instrument is. We actually want to see the variables in that instrument. So how can we do this? Well, Python, because it's good, <laughs> comes with something built in called vars. If we wrap our object in vars, then it'll print to us a dictionary of all the variables on that class and their current values. Now when we want to print to the output, we're going to need to convert this into a string. So what we can do is wrap this into, into a string, and you can see with these speech marks, it's now made a string for us with the variables. And this is the kind of thing we might want to see when we print our dog. However, if I still go to D here, we still see that we've got this. So we can use another built-in function Repra, I don't know how people usually pronounce this. Self means attached to the instance again. And here we can return the string vars self. And now every time we try to print our dog instance, if I just execute all this again, what you'll see is that we now get, instead of the memory address, we get the values, the keys and the values 
that are part of our class. So you'll be seeing this later on in the course, particularly when we start setting up the OANDA API, the instruments and trades and things like this. One more thing we do need to cover, however, is class methods. I've already said that these are instance methods. And in fact, we can define our own instance methods. If I make an instance method called woof and put self on it and just print woof, execute and execute, I can now say d.woof and we get woof printed to the output because I've declared much like these two here, my own method here, and I've said it's self is the first parameter that means it's attached to every individual instance of my dog and therefore it'll call this function. So what about class level methods then? Well class level methods are methods that don't belong to the individual instances, they belong to the class. Now there are various ways of writing these. The way I like to do it is to put a decorator and don't worry at all about what decorators are or do, we don't need to do this for the entire course, just know that you have to write a class method here. And now I'm going to do a CLS underscore woof. And now the argument is going to be CLS. You'll notice self is not the argument CLS is. That's saying this is a class method. So what's calling this is the actual class, not an instance of the class. And that's critical. So if I just take this print and copy it and put CLS woof, we can see how we might use class methods below. So let's have a little bit look at how this works. If I want to call this function, I can type dog, capital D, remember it's the name of the class, dot CLS woof. And you can see I get CLS woof printed. So I can add functionality to my class that has nothing to do with the instances, but contained inside the class I have some functions that are called by using dog and then dot and the function name. And this is really, really useful for grouping functionality in your application in different places that's easy to understand. So for example, an instrument class would have a class level function maybe that loads all of the instruments. It has nothing to do with an actual individual instrument, but we want to get a list of instruments. And in our code, we can type instrument dot get all instruments. And it's easy to understand and easy to structure. If I try and call woof using not a class instance, but the class as a whole, you can see that it says the woof is required, missing a required argument, which is self. In other words, it's not happening on an instance, so it won't work. However, there is a tiny gotcha. I can call a class method using an instance of the class. So be careful of this. So that in a nutshell is all we need to know about classes to get through most of the rest of the course, because it's all really we're going to be using. We're going to be using the init, this repra. We're going to be defining the odd function that belongs to an instance of the class. And we're also going to be defining a few class methods that we can call by saying the class name dot and then the class method. So I hope that was clear. It's important if you're beginning that you understand the basics of what we're going to be doing with classes from now on in. And of course, there's endless material online that describes exactly how Python classes work and you can look those up for yourselves anyway. So thanks very much for watching and uh, see you in the next video.